Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Dr. Alessandro. Please like and subscribe. In this video, I'm going to be answering the question, Hey Doc, what's a dry socket? So, people often hear the term dry socket, and it's typically um, referred to or maybe mentioned with extractions of wisdom teeth, but it can happen for any extraction site or any site of exposed bone. And so dry socket is just that, it is exposed bone. That is bone that is exposed to the oral cavity or to the mouth, whatever the contents of the mouth is, saliva, bacteria, and all that stuff. So what happens typically is this, if there's an injury or healing site, that is you get teeth taken out from one spot or another, typically a blood clot forms as healing is starting and the blood clot covers all the bone, exposed bone, and then after that, tissue fills in and healing happens. So that's the very rudimentary basic of healing. Now, in the case of a dry socket, that's not what happens. So the blood clot somehow either doesn't form on its own, it forms or, you know, it might form partially but not entirely. Uh, maybe there's bone irregularity, something's happened like that, uh, and it doesn't quite cover all the bone, or it gets dislodged, that is, somehow through either sneezing, some sort of negative pressure event, sucking on a straw, those sorts of things, the blood clot gets knocked out of its spot and then bone is exposed and it's very, very painful. And that's the thing. It isn't necessarily an infection, it's just very, very painful. Uh, you can be taking ibuprofen and Tylenol, um, even possibly some narcotics might not knock out the discomfort. So you could be taking a lot of meds and you'd still feel discomfort. So that is basically the nuts and bolts of what a dry socket is. Just exposed bone because healing hasn't properly happened. So what can you do about it? Well, you need to go to your dentist to have the site packed. So hopefully he or she will get you numb because packing it without is very painful uh, and will go ahead and pack the site with some sort of a dressing. Uh, it depends, every doc has something different and I know they've come out with some new products, uh, but the site needs to be covered so that healing can happen. So what then, who's more susceptible to this? Now, quite frankly, you know, my clinical experience says that guys have it more often. Um, that just happens to be my own personal experience. That's mainly who I've seen a dry socket in. If I had to say it's probably about three quarters, maybe a two thirds to three quarters guys and one third um, females. Reality in a textbook says that actually women are supposed to be more susceptible than men. I just think that men take, well, do a terrible job of taking care of themselves, um, you know, on average. So this is, again, some people do a great job, don't get me wrong, but on average, guys are a little bit worse than girls as far as taking care of themselves. Just how it is, guys, that's how it is. Uh, so um, they end up with dry socket more frequently, but if you go by what statistics say, and what textbooks say, females are more likely to develop complications with dry socket than men. Other folks who are a little more susceptible to it. Anybody who smokes, that's a problem because that impairs healing. So if you're a smoker and you've had extractions done, you're a little more likely to get dry socket because unfortunately the smoking part actually slows your healing down, especially in the mouth. And so, you know, blood clot might not entirely form and then of course the bone is exposed and it becomes painful. Other folks are more susceptible. Anybody who's maybe immunocompromised is more susceptible to dry socket. And that means especially diabetics. So folks who have diabetes are a bit immune compromised. And so uh, they are more likely to develop dry socket than the average person. So there you have it. That is what dry socket is. Uh, that is who it affects the most typically and um, how to prevent it. Well, don't spit, don't use a straw, you know, don't do things that could basically suck out the blood clot and uh, cause an exposed bone traumatize your area, you gotta be gentle, don't brush, don't brush directly in the site of an extraction the day of the extraction. You wanna avoid it just, just for that day or two. Avoid it, just keep everything else clean and then go back to it later once healing is started. So uh, that said, that's the very basics. I'm sure uh, there are entire chapters devoted to this in textbooks. And uh, if you want to know more in depth, please refer to them, but uh, that is it. So thanks so much for joining me on this video about dry socket and I hope you're all staying well and healthy.